this is always the awkward silent stage and you have to sit you have to sit and wait for people to come on or that's the idea uh, this is Dr. Callion and good morning um, good morning to my friends good morning I am up and uh, glad to be alive glad to be in the land of the living and um, I have a couple of engagements today and I wanted to make sure that I stop by and say good morning to everyone and to God bless you and uh, another beautiful day that the Lord has blessed us to be alive another week we have made it through um, all of our challenges and today we are going to talk about battling or fighting the God kind of way and uh, many of us uh, we there is a strategy there is usually a way to win that if we consult the Lord we will receive insight and understanding and so we're just going to talk for a little bit on today and um, as I said we'll have some other opportunities to share the gospel on today uh, several places I'll be visiting or that I'll need to go and so I just want to say good morning to all of my friends and all of you believers that are still in the fight you know contending for the faith that means you know nothing comes to a believer without a battle anything that you want from the Lord or from the Lord you're gonna have to wrestle with things to get it it's not simple there are uh, things that you will have to do and so we're going to talk about battling the God kind of way good morning to my one viewer God bless you thank you for tuning in um, as I said I'm not going to be before you very long God bless you evangelist Jasmine I was coming in to speak a little bit about battling uh, fighting the God kind of way and uh, I uh, good morning uh, cousin Annette God bless you hope to see you all in a little bit I am going to come on I uh, have several <laughs> times I'm going to be preaching this morning before 11 but I am still headed to the house of the Lord so I'm stopping by uh, if you have ever had any battles in your life and you have lost this is a message for you there is a strategy for winning when you are fighting a battle God has planned for your victory, but he has a strategy. And I wanted to use Joshua 7, 2 through 6 as a backdrop for this particular lesson. I usually have my little Bible with me. I do not. I have another one here. This one's falling apart. But we're going to go ahead and uh, bless the Lord on this morning or be a blessing to his people. Because I know people are fighting many battles and I had shared this before, but again, sometimes when you preach, you are a different person when you preach at another time. And so now, I have previously called it the art of war. There is a strategy for you to win in this season. And I'm going to use Joshua chapter 7, 2 through 6 and 11 as a backdrop. I hope I wrote that in. I think I forgot. I'll go back and... Uh, fill it in when I'm done. Amen. So we're going to start in Joshua 7, 2 through 6. And I wanted to say that the purpose of fighting is to you're accomplishing a goal. You're either, you either have an offensive fight. That means you're attacking something or you're taking or you you're taking or trying to obtain something that means you're doing the fighting or you're at a defensive stance that means you're protecting something or you're trying to keep or hold on to something that means something is fighting you and so when you're in a fight you want to fight so that you do the most damage or you if you sustain damage you want to mitigate your damages that means you don't want to suffer a great loss you want whatever uh, battle you may have you want to take the least amount of blows uh, the least amount of pain uh, the least amount of serious damage so you want to fight in a way that you are are protecting yourself or you are moving in a way that you don't want to sustain you know damage from the enemy 
from the coming enemy. So there are constant battles coming at you. When you are a believer, anything you want from God, you're going to have to battle for it. You're going to have to fight for it. The enemy is not going to sit idly by and let you subdue and take dominion without a struggle. There is a battle and we're going to talk about the art of war, which we're talking about this morning is our subtitle. So we are in Joshua 7, 2 through 6. I'm giving you a little background. Listen, when you are in a fight, you need to have a strategy. What does that mean? Strategy is a plan of action to achieve an overall goal. A strategy. What is what are what do you want to do? What are you trying to overtake? What are you are trying to accomplish in this next season you will need a strategy a plan of action to achieve your overall goal next you will need a tactic tactic means an action that is carefully planned to achieve a specific end that's a win how you know and then the technique is a way of carrying out a particular task that's the high that's the how again when you are fighting you need a strategy that is the what you need tactic that's when and you need a technique that means how so let me give you an example so any good fighter is going to take these things into consideration if he expects to win listen we are fighting battles and if you want to win the God kind of way he has a way to do it so with God you need us he's going to give you a strategy a tactic and a technique so when I was very young the first time that I knew that this was true was when I saw Muhammad Ali in 1974. He fought George Foreman, and George Foreman was a very formidable opponent. <clears throat> Amen. So <clears throat> in this battle, Muhammad Ali employed this particular strategy called the rope-a-dope. And this is the first time as a young girl that I saw a fight. I saw that it took skill. And it wasn't just coming out flailing in anger, throwing punches at the air or beating the air. There was a way that he had come up with a technique to beat this particular this particular opponent. Now, mind you, Muhammad Ali was a very big, you know, they were heavyweights, so they weren't skinny men. They were very muscular and very well de defined in their body weight, you know. And George Foreman was a very big man. And so Muhammad Ali deployed this particular uh, strategy during the fight. He laid up against the rope and he covered his face. He covered himself and he allowed George Foreman to punch him, punch him, punch him repeatedly over and over again. But he covered up his body and he just bounced on on the rope he just laid on the ropes and allowed George Foreman to pummel him with a flurry of punches but over a course of several rounds of doing that George Foreman started to get tired <laughs> and Muhammad Ali had conserved his energy by laying in a stance where it appeared he was not attacking he was allowed he was in a defensive stand allowing the enemy to come up on him but he had a strategy he was in a way where he was a, a uh, 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 mitigating his damages as far as conserving his energy. He was maintaining his stamina. He was staying fresh because he was just bouncing off of the ropes as George Foreman was punching him. So listen, when you are fighting, you have to think on your feet. You don't have time to stop and figure out what to do. You have to think fast. So again, this particular technique that Muhammad Ali employed was a way and a, 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 a opportunity that he had studied this fighter. He had studied his opponent. He knew that he was going, he may be on a toe-to-toe -to -toe fighting him blow for blow, that he may have been at a disadvantage so he had to employ another strategy, a technique, and, and tactics in order to beat this formidable opponent. So again, he lay on the ropes, and uh, at the setting point in time, he comes out of this stance when George Foreman is sweating and profusely, and he's all winded and tired, and Muhammad Ali is able to unleash a flurry of punches he is full of energy he is energized and this particular tactic worked as he defeated George Foreman in this fight so you have to anticipate your opponent's next move but you can only do that if you study the opponent so 
in Joshua chapter 7. Let me give you a historical background. The children of Israel are fresh out of the wilderness. And their previous leader Moses has passed away. He is now dead. So sometimes some things that are familiar are gone in this new season. Maybe the things you used in the last season, they're not going to work this time. So we are shell shocked sometimes when God is done with things. When he has turned the page, many times people are stuck in tradition. They're stuck in the past. They're stuck in an old pattern. You can't win today with last year's technique. You're going to need a new strategy, new technique, and a new tactic. Amen. So word of the word of the Lord in Luke 9 and 6, he said, let the dead bury the dead. When God is through with something, he's done with it. Moses is dead. So when old leadership or old ways of doing things have have passed energy must be given to developing a new identity so now Joshua was under the regime of Moses but at this particular time he has now become uh, in the front of the line he is now a part of leadership he is no longer a part of them he is the one out front so now Joshua is going to have to uh, learn his new identity there was a shift in generational leadership. They went from an old Moses to a 40-year-old Joshua. Amen. We must have remain open to change because God is always moving. Okay, Joshua 1 and 5. It said God had told Moses, not Moses, he told Joshua that no man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Those were the words given to Joshua in this particular passage. So now we are into the next thing. We must be careful to remember, don't allow pride to make you too over-reliant on yourself when you are battling battles and fighting with the, the God kind of way you cannot do it alone and we are designed to be in a joint effort with God amen no matter what take God with you whenever you are battling we must be careful to remember the art the supreme art of fighting is to subdue and take dominion of the enemy without fighting so previously there were victories that the Lord wrought for the children of Israel when they didn't even have to use their hands. Listen, the Red Sea was parted and Moses only stretched out his rod at God's instruction. And in uh, Jer Joshua chapter 6, the battle of Jericho, Joshua and his army marched around the wall seven times. And then when the priests blew their horn upon Joshua's command, he instructed them to shout and the wall fell down. So Joshua was taking an old tactic into a new battle. We're in Joshua chapter 7 verses 2 through 6 and 11. We're talking about fighting the God kind of way. If you have a battle you want to battle you want to fight it the way that God tells you to fight it so the battle of I is significant why because when we're going to read let us read we're Joshua 7 chapter 2 God bless you thank you for all of you that are tuning in evangelist uh let me see Naveed John uh, uh Miss Lewis God bless you all we're Joshua chapter 7 verse number 2 now Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside Beth-Avon, on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the country. So the men went up and spied out Ai, verse number 3 of chapter 7 of Joshua. And they returned to Joshua and said to him, Do not let all the people go up. But let about two or three thousand men go up and attack I. Do not weary all the people there, for the people of I are, are few. So about three thousand men went up there from the people, but they fled before the men of I. And the men of I struck down about thirty-six men, for they chased them from before the gate as far as Shibram. Shibram and struck them down on the descent. Therefore the hearts of the people melted and became like water. Then Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the, before the, before the ark of the Lord 
until evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. And Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you brought these people over the Jordan at all to deliver us into the hands of the Amorites to destroy us? Oh, that we have been content and dwelled on the other side of the Jordan. Listen, this morning we're talking about battling. The, if you have a battle, we're fighting the God kind of way. And in the battle of I, we're talking about this is the first significant loss that Joshua suffered as a new leader. So many times when you are going into a new territory with a new season, with a new, uh, you're, you're, you're developing into a new identity, you may have some losses. So because they lost this battle at I, his confidence was shaken. And this is understandable. Joshua did his due diligence in spying out the land. He sent men to go out and, and see what they were coming up against. See, they, they, they did some background and, and why we why did he lose the war see why Joshua lost that eye we're going to talk about that sometimes the first point sometimes we underestimate the opponent John 10:10 10, 10 reminds us the thief cometh not but to steal and to kill and destroy and some people don't believe that there is a devil. <laughs> some people don't believe there is a hell. Some people don't believe that there is bad and good. Uh, evil does exist. They're very skeptical. Joshua failed to call on God from the very beginning is the reason why he lost at the battle of Ai. This is his first significant loss coming out of the wilderness and assuming new leadership. And so I'm sharing with you, sometimes in a battle, we may lose because we underestimate the fierceness of the fight. We underestimate our opponent. Sometimes we don't have correct information. J Joshua listened to bad advice. Listen, he listened to what the people said. Sometimes we are ill-prepared. We, we don't have the right strategy. Sometimes we're trying to fight against something that's a formidable opponent and we don't have good information. We don't have good intel. We're not ready for that level of, of, of fight. Sometimes we're eyeing something or we want something that we're not prepared for and God is not ready to release to us. So sometimes we lose a battle because we're not ready for the next level. Sometimes we are fighting with the wrong tools. Listen, as Christians, Ephesians 6 and 12 shares we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. God bless you evangelist, evangelist Elishba. Uh, Ephesians 6 and 12, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against rulers of the dark ages and spiritual wickedness in, in high places. Listen, we are fighting and we don't fight with these. We fight on our knees. Amen. We fight in the heavenlies. We fight on a supernatural level. We as believers need to know where our help comes from. That's Psalms 121 too. My help comes from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. Oftentimes we are wrongfully battling external forces on the outside, but the internal battle is with the stuff on the inside is causing us the greatest loss again we're talking about battling fighting the god kind of way he has a strategy and a technique for you to win in this next season sometimes god lets us lose because we are grow spiritually first corinthians 10 and 13 says uh, the lord will not put more on us than you can bear he will make a way to escape so he has determined when you go into battle that you can win, but you have to use his strategy and his technique. So often when we lose, it's because we need to be stretched. Sometimes attacks are random. That means you need to remain alert because uh, you have an enemy. Peter 5, 1 First Peter 5 and 8 shares us to be sober and vigilant because the adversary, he is roaming around like a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. We have to live ready and be prepared. We cannot let our guards down. We are in a fight contending for the faith. 
If you want to be victorious in this next season, you need to learn a strategy, a technique, and tactics. There is a way for you to win your next battle. This particular fight that Joshua had at the Battle of I, if you will read on over into the next uh, section, God allowed a, a, an opponent they should have run over that they ended up taking a very great loss. Israel took a small amount of people. They didn't take a big army. So they assumed that the people they were coming up against were, were people they would be able to beat. But they end up suffering a great loss. And uh, sometimes God allows us to lose battles because it grows our faith muscle it also grooms us to be strong warriors also we don't grow without something to conquer Many times we feel equipped for a fight until we get in it. And so it increases our warfare IQ. Every battle that we have. Amen. Many times if you want more, if you want to see increase, you got to fight. Nothing comes to believers without a fight. If you are a child of God, you have to contend for the faith. You have to hold on to your faith. You have to understand God has a strategy, a technique, and, and a tactic for you to win your battle in the next season God often has more belief in us than we have in ourselves but sometimes he allows us to suffer a loss so we can find out that we have weaknesses that we have areas that we have access that we have holes that need to be covered everybody doesn't want you to win how bad do you want it God puts things out of our reach often because he wants to see our commitment level he wants to to see are you in it for the real haul are you for real do you really want what it is you're praying for do you really want what it is you're going after good morning uh pastor Masi. god bless you thank you for tuning in i'm talking about fighting and winning a battle the god kind of way it was a former message called the order of war if you want to win a battle in your next season god has a strategy and a technique we're using Joshua chapter 7, verse 2 through 6, verse 11. I'm going to read that. We're going to talk about because Joshua lost this battle. Why should he lose when it was obvious he should have won? Why? Because he did not take God with him. He did not assess the throne. He did not ask God's wisdom. He did not ask God's blessing. He went in just as David took a census back in some parts of first king and allowed 180 people 185,000 people to be killed because he took a census relying more on the number of people that he had instead of trusting in the arm of the Lord the word of God tells you do not trust in horses and chariots i will trust in the name of the Lord listen Joshua 7 is talking about Joshua losing a battle at I and why did he lose listen Joshua chapter 7 verse 11 Israel has sinned and they have also transgressed my covenant which I command thee for they have ta even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived and they have also put it amongst their own stuff listen the battle was lost at I because of the sin from within many times we are looking for external reasons why we lost the battle why we suffered a loss why we suffered a backset and many times it's because we have internal issues that we need to deal with it was not the opponent it was inside it was an internal job they had sin in the camp it was sin in their camp and it made them weak it made them weak because they had deception on the inside. And there was people within that were not keeping the word of God. God had told them when they went to battle at Jericho. Many times God would tell them what to take, what to do, what to kill. Many times they are to obliterate everything. They are not to uh, 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 use any of it for their own personal gain. Most of the things that they recovered were for use in the temple. God bless you. James Biswa, God bless you tuning in from Bangladesh thank you again we're talking about battling the God kind of way battling victories and winning God's 
kind of way. There is an art to war. There is a tactic. There's a strategy and a technique that God wants to give you to win in this season. But just as the people of God lost the battle of I because there was sin in the camp. They had not ascertained that they had someone in their camp that was not uh, 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 that was not truthful. That they had stolen some things from their last battle and they had planted it within the camp. They had planted it under their tent. They had planted it in their in, underneath their their uh, underground so as to hide it. And so Joshua did not know this as a leader. He did not know that there was sin in the camp. He did not know that that Achan, his name was Achan, and he had taken some things from the last battle that God had strictly told them not to attack, to to uh, uh, take a cursed things, but he had taken something and God had picked up on it. Listen, sometimes you have a weakness because you have not taken care of all of your weaknesses. Sometimes the enemy or their sin or there's unrepentance, there's an open door to the enemy that he can come and he can wreak havoc in your situation and you can't understand why it seems like you can't move forward because it's sin within. There's things within you that you need to resolve. Things within in you that's keeping you from your next level. Things within you that's keeping you from moving forward. Listen, the Lord has a strategy and technique and tactics for you to win this next battle. But Joshua did not consult the Lord. He consulted his friends. He believed in the numbers. He looked at the number of people and all of the things that we do that sets us up for failure when we depend on ourselves and we use our own ideas and our thoughts and Instead of consulting the wisdom of God, many times you will assume and you're going to win and you end up losing. Why? Because you cannot often take the momentum from last season's win into this next season's battle. You have to get a new strategy. You have to get a new technique because different levels are different devils. They require different levels of consecration, different levels of oil, different levels of understanding, different levels breaking open into the prophetic and spiritual realm. You need to have power and authority and you need to be given the nod for those dimensions. Many people are trying to enter realms that they have not qualified for. Your oil does not qualify you. You're, 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 it just that you're not ready. And so many times you run up against an opponent you're not prepared for. And that is what happened. Joshua had to learn to lean and depend on the Lord and consult God before every battle, not to depend on the fact that they won at Jericho. I was a different beast. And he assumed because they won at Jericho that they were going to take that same momentum into I. But guess what? You need a new strategy and a new technique for every level is a different devil. You need another level of faith. You need another level of understanding. You need more knowledge, more instruction, more discernment. You need uh, to have the forces of heaven on, on with you, whatever you do, wherever you go, and so therefore you need to consult God because He'll tell you when to do it, He'll tell you what to do, and He tell you how to do it. And so Joshua, he failed to consult the Lord in this particular opportunity. So it was a learning opportunity for him that God gave him a chance to learn from his loss. So what do you do after a loss? That means you need to regroup when you have suffered a loss. And you just can't believe it. You need to sit down and shake it off. You need to take some time and to prepare yourself before continuing to do something that's difficult. You need to just sit down, stop, and think about how you're going to approach it. You need to take time to figure out what happened. Regrouping is taking time to figure out when I lost the battle, what did I do this time that I didn't do last time. Sometimes we need to take the time to figure out why we suffered a loss. Next, you need to reassess. You need to think about it in order to decide whether to change your opinion or a judgment and decide if you want to do it again. You Listen, Joshua 7 and 10. So the Lord said to Joshua, get up. 
Why do you lie thus on your face? That means the Lord is like just because you suffer the loss, it does not mean it's over. You have to set priorities and decide what is important and what really matters. So once you regroup, you shake it off, you reassess, you think about what happened, and you decide if you want to do it again. And so therefore you get up and you recommit. That's number three. This is what you do after a loss. Number one, you regroup. Number two, you reassess. Number three. You recommit. You commit again. You make the promise again. Joshua 7 and 14. It says the Lord was committed to taking Joshua through the process of taking house by house, family by family, man by man to weed out the problem. You got to be determined to be committed to God and his ways no matter what. God had a strategy for Israel to win in this season. But because Joshua did not consult the Lord before he went to battle, they suffered a loss that could have been avoided. Many times we are trying to fight off of last season's oil. We're trying to fight off a last season strategy, technique and the tactics and they are out of date. God has to upload supernatural information in your new season. How you're going to uh, take territory. How you're going to move forward. Who you're going to need and how you're going to do it. So after a loss you need to regroup, reassess recommit and next you need to retool you need to organize something in a new or different way in order to improvement improve it that means you need to rearrange reorganize or update listen first samuel 17 and 39 says david fastened on saul's sword over his tunic and tried walking around because he had not used them and David says, I cannot go in these because I am not used to them. So he took it off. So you cannot fight. A tr you cannot use old tools to fight a new battle. Many times God has a new tactic, a new technique, and a new strategy for you to win in this season. Joshua. Joshua lost because he assumed that he knew what to do. Listen, as believers, retooling, I have uh, some strategies to help you in this next season if you want to win your battle. Listen, as I just was sharing, they tried to put David in 1 Samuel 17, 39. They tried to, for David to put on Saul's old armor and he could not walk in it. All David knew was the rocks and his slingshot. He was not comfortable fighting a new battle with untested tools. God is going to give you a strategy and a technique that you're familiar with that he is going to work, work with you on so that you have an understanding. He will give you clarity on what you need. Clarity on the tools. Clarity on the strategy, the technique and the tactic. List Joshua 7.25 and Joshua says, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned him with stones and they burned them with fire after they had stoned him with stones. This was the the the, the, uh, the judgment of Achan for having for the Israel's uh, uh, men having to suffer the loss and I because Achan was the one that had the accursed thing in his in his uh in his uh, hut, in his in in his his uh, underneath his bed or his sleeping quarters, and so they end up killing the family and Aiken. All of them were eliminated. Many times you got to kill the sin in your life, all of it. You can't leave none, nothing hanging around. None of this family members, none of no residual. All the demons have to go. God wants to get to the root of the problem. Look, as believers. Retooling may be you need to come to Bible class on a regular basis. Many of you all need to be consistent in your giving. Retooling may be that you're more diligent in prayer. Retooling may be that you're more committed to setting aside time to reading God's word. Retooling for a believer. We need to be serious about growing our faith. We need to be consistent and faithful in our service. Retooling for a believer when you're coming out of the lost. We need to be sincere in our praise and worship. We need to acknowledge God in all our ways and allow him to direct our path. Proverbs 3 and 5. We need to identify and get rid of known sin. Wrong attachments to people, places, and things. This is the way you're going to retool in the next season. We need to prioritize what God says is important. We need to not be afraid to move, shift, change in a moment's notice. And we need to speak faith-filled words and declarations over ourselves daily, hourly, 
minute by minute until we believe. Listen, we must determine what is what is in our life keeping us from God's best. How can we use a loss to prepare for our future victories? We need to learn from the past. We never really lose. We just learn to fight more efficiently. And God is able to restore anything that we think we lost in a battle that he orchestrates. Listen, Romans 8, 28 tells us, And we know that all things work together for good of those who love the Lord, to those called according to his purpose. I know I was going fast, but listen, I have another engagement. But I wanted to stop by and say good morning and blessings to you all. Listen, you got to fight. You got to fight you got to fight to hold on to your faith. You got to fight to hold on to territory. You got to fight to hold on this season. You got to fight. It's a battle everywhere, but you want to make sure you're doing the good the hard work of looking inside, searching your heart and moving any sin, known sin out of the way, anything that will be prevent you from moving to the next level. Unattach yourself from pieces, people, places and things. From doubters, from naysayers, all kind of distractions, weights, and sins that will keep you from winning the, this battle in the next season. I just wanted to stop by to let you know there is a way to battle effectively, and it is by seeking the Lord before you go into battle. Joshua found out just because they had a bunch of people, they had a large number of people. And he had assumed because they won in Jericho when they went to I, he that he downsized and took a a, a a skeleton crew of men and they suffered a great loss because they underestimated their opponent. They underestimated the fierceness of the fight. They thought they knew what to do, because, but they did not. They did not stop to ask the Lord. They did not stop to seek the Lord for a strategy. They did not stop stop to seek the Lord for a technique and a tactic in this season. God had given them a technique and tactic for victory in Jericho. They knew what to do. They that's why they the walls fell down. They were able to subdue and take dominion without even touching the enemy. They didn't even have to use their hands. So guess what? This is their next battle and they just assumed that they were just going to go in there and manhandle these Amorites and they ended up suffering a great loss. So listen, many times we don't know what's around the corner or, or our next battle or maybe you're in the middle of a battle or about to go into battle or, or you have something on the horizon. I want you to know that if you consult the Lord, he will give you a technique, a strategy and tactics on winning in this next season. And oftentimes... We, if we suffer a loss, there is a reason. And sometimes we are created, we become more tenacious, we become more determined. It, it builds our faith, it stretches us, it makes us stronger. We hate to hear that, that loss makes you stronger, but it does. And many times you develop a, a warfare IQ. You learn how to fight. You learn how to go. Every time you have a battle, you, you learn how to do it better the next time. You learn how to battle better. Amen. So when you get an understanding of the Bible, the Word, you seek the Lord and get clarity on a strategy, a technique, and a tactic, you can battle better as a believer. That's what we want to do. We want to have wins in our life. We want to move forward and so that we're able to accomplish great things from God. But many times, just as Joshua, we may end up losing a battle we should have won, but because we didn't consult the Lord, because we didn't ask the Lord, because we did not get new strategy, new technique, and new tactics for a new season, for a new enemy, we suffered a loss. Amen. Many times we got to be willing to move and morph and change and adjust as God is moving. Many times we're trying to take tradition into the future and God is done with that. God bless you. Pastor Daniel Masi. See you soon. Amen. I'm going to get on out of here as I share with you all. I have another engagement in just a little bit and I have something else after that. But I'm letting the Lord use me on today. I just stopped by to tell you all if you're contending for the faith. Joshua 7 and, and uh, Joshua 7 is a good uh, model because it tells you the sin was internal. Many times our losses come from our, us being prideful, thinking we can do something without God or we can do it on our own or we have sin in our life or different things that the enemy can attack as we try to move forward and God have not, we have not brought those things to God 
for him to cleanse us and, and get us together on them. And so we open the door to the enemy and we end up suffering a loss when we could have won. So again, this is showing us how even a formidable uh, 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 Israel, as many people as they had were large in number, they end, ended up losing, uh, suffering a loss because they went off cocky because they thought they could do something without God because they won last season. They assumed that things were going to be the same, but it was totally different, and they were able to uh, uh, find out that the sin was in the camp, and when they eradicated that sin by killing Achan and all of the accursed things were burnt up, his family was killed, they were able to come out victorious on the next time. So God bless you. Make sure that you remove all known sin out of your life. Make sure you consult God before you go into battle, before you open your mouth, before you make that decision, before you get into debt, before you launch that ministry, before you marry that man, before you have that baby, before you throw your hands up and give up, before you say it can't be done, before you say it's impossible. Talk to the Lord. Give the Lord a chance. He has a strategy, he has a technique, and he has a tactic for you to win in this next season. Be well and be victorious in Jesus' name.